Hits one in the air, left back, it goes! MLB playoffs are near, and you know what that means, Alex? Yep, Flippin' Bats will be staying up late and having all the fun. From breaking down the most important stories and games, nobody's done what he's doing. Nobody, not even Babe Ruth. To interviewing baseball's biggest stars. I felt like I was pitching more stress. I was trying to be so perfect. No one covers America's pastime like us. So as we sprint towards this year's World Series on Fox, please make sure to listen, follow, and subscribe to Flippin' Bats with Ben Verlander and me. Alex Curry. Baseball is fun, and so are we. We're going to have fun, dang it. We'll talk to you soon. This episode is brought to you by Undeniably Dairy. Dairy farmers are more than farmers. They're climate caretakers. They see water as a precious resource. Most farmers recycle water up to four times, from chilling the milk to irrigating the crops. And some even use technology to turn manure into renewable energy. To learn more about what dairy farmers are doing to make their farms more sustainable, visit usdairy.com. Good day. This is the Man Fuse Podcast. Ben H. Fired up. Sitting. What at- up? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, Ben, for not overmodulating the audio and hurting my eardrums. <laughs> no problem. Today on the Man Fuse podcast, Ben H. is going to share something with you that he feels so strongly about that if you do, you will receive everything you could ever want. You can make as much money as you have ever dreamed of making if you do this one thing over a period of time. We're also going to talk about Oliver Anthony, who we spoke about last week and his overnight rise to stardom. He has come out with a response to all the feedback and how much his song has resonated with so many people. We also talk about another indictment for the former president, Donald Trump, this time in Fulton County, Georgia, in Ben and I's neck of the woods. So Ben, you were on a rant before I hit record. Now you were just ranting that everything on the other end of whatever you want is 2,000 contacts. Anything you want in this world is 2,000 cold contacts Brisk. away. Maybe warm too, but let's just say 2,000 contacts away. Specifically, it doesn't really matter what it is. I would wager that you could pretty much achieve anything in your life that you want with 2,000 cold contacts. Does anyone want to take that bet? I'll bet. Does anybody want to take the challenge? The challenge. 2,000 cold contacts. Want to start a business? Need to make some sales? What is it that you do anyway? Now let's define. Who are those 2,000 contacts? Yes, who are they indeed? Can't go ask the bum. It's highly unlikely to get, if you ask 2,000 homeless people, probably unlikely to get you where you want to go. Well, yeah, everybody does something different. Everybody's got their own unique blend of skills, and we all have different jobs and ideas and things that we're doing already. And if we could just get past that point, if we could just get to the next level, if we could just level up to the next thing, what would that do? What would an extra you know, three or four hundred thousand dollars a year do for your household. If that was a goal that you had, let's say to generate another three or four hundred thousand dollars worth of revenue for your household over the next 12 months, I would argue that you could do that with 2,000 cold contacts in whatever area of specialization you might have. What do you think? I agree. If you're focused on 2,000, it doesn't matter if number 50 says no, and number 51 says get the fuck out of here, and number 52 calls you, three calls you an idiot, and 54, yada, yada, yada. But 70, 1, 79, 84, 91 might right. be your golden goose. Well, let me add this extra layer of clarification to what I'm saying. Add it, Ben. I'm talking about you making the contacts. I'm not talking about your assistant. I'm not talking about someone in the Philippines. I'm not talking about the person that you just hired. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I'm talking about you making 2,000 cold contacts. But depending on what business you're in, that might not even be necessary. 
I mean, you might be able to have somebody in the Philippines, or it might just be through email marketing. I'm talking about accomplishing greatness. I'm talking about overcoming something incredible. Sure, that works too. Absolutely. But if I hire someone to do 2,000 cold contacts for me, that doesn't necessarily, in the way I'm proposing this, guarantee the success. Does that make sense? Yes. Because- I'm not saying that you can hire someone to do 2,000 cold contacts for you and get anything you want in this world. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that I propose that you could make 2,000 cold contacts and accomplish anything in this world that you desire, as long as it's moral, morally right, ethical, and legal. I mean, Otherwise, I, mean, I don't support it. Just had to throw that out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, but where Ben might not support it, you could always ask me because I like to walk the gray line. And so I might be okay with it. I might be able to sacrifice my morals. That's right. That's right. And, you know, ultimately, we are in such a strange world right now. What is going on out here? Well, I mean, we kind of talked about this last week when we were. How could you not talk about it every day? Every day. It's like, wow. Really? It's shocking. Ben, we have been um, removed again, gotten a strike from YouTube. Oh, no. Another strike and another piece of content removed. Please, no. Yes. From an episode 75, and at some point you had mentioned vaccine. You can't say vaccine. You can't say that word. That's like saying... You can't say it, but you have to take it. I guess... I mean, I mean, think about that. But it's weird because anything that goes against the WHO, the World Health Organization, right, including guidance about specific substances and treatments that present an inherent risk of severe bodily harm or death. Like the vaccine? Correct. Don't say that on here, okay, Ben? <laughs> I mean, we're being censored. Hey, look, I, I've heard both sides. I've heard that the vaccine was great for people. And I've heard that the vaccine was really bad for others. But and do you know we know what? that it was great for people? Because the, the results are not all in. I don't know. And I'm I, one that got it. But I'm open to the idea that the vaccine was life-saving and it was great for people. I'm also open to the idea that it wasn't. And I'm also open to the idea that everyone should decide for themselves. And you should have the freedom to speak freely about what your opinion of something is or is not. But apparently that's not the case anymore. And that's what I mean. We are really living in strange times. Saw something yesterday. Um, we Last week, uh, in the last episode, we featured um, an artist. His name is Oliver Anthony, who has blown up. Blown like, up. Out of nowhere. This guy was out of nowhere. I've been selling my soul. Working all day, overtime hours for bullshit pay So I can sit out here and waste my life away Drag back home and drown my troubles away It's a damn shame what the world's gotten to For people like me, people like you Wish I could just wake up and it not be true But it is, oh it is, living in the new He has broken his silence. Did you see what he wrote? No. Did you see his response to? I didn't see it. Um, A lot's changed since the last time I sat here and spoke to you. Um, My friends and family have asked me how I'm doing. Everybody is wondering if I'm uh, if I've lost my sanity yet, and I'm surprisingly calm and at peace. I've. I don't even know what to say, but I I feel thankful to be given this opportunity. Um, you know, the music side is exciting, and all the Billboard, iTunes charts, and all that crap—that's great. But uh, what's 
the exciting part's been the conversations I've had with people and the things I've learned just in a couple of weeks about um, about the human spirit and um, and and about all sorts of other things, the music industry and and how how dirty everything is. Like it's it's worse than you think. So I don't know what the future looks like for me. I'm not really too concerned about the future. I'm living in the present. And I'm I just have to have I just have to have the discernment to make the right decisions from here on out. Because um I think about that guy who was sitting here a few weeks ago talking to you and uh the most important thing and the most important thing to me is not leaving him behind. I don't want to go on some roller coaster ride and come off a different person. Uh, if there is anything for me to address at all with you, it's that uh, you know, it's the one thing that has bothered me is seeing people wrap politics up into this. Uh, I'm disappointed to see, like, it's aggravating seeing people on conservative news try to identify with me like I'm one of them. It's aggravating seeing certain musicians and politicians act like we're buddies and, and act like we're fighting the same struggle here, like that we're trying to present the same message. Uh, you know, I've, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and I've tried to be polite to everybody and, um... I've talked to hundreds of people the last two weeks. It seems like certain people want to just ride the attention of this song to maybe make them their own selves relevant, and that's aggravating as hell. The other thing that I find aggravating is, uh, well, you know, like it was funny seeing my song in the. It was fun. It was funny seeing it at the presidential debate because it's like I wrote that song about those people. You know, so for them to have to sit there and listen to that, uh, that cracks me up. <laughs> uh, but it was funny kind of seeing the response to it. Like that song has nothing to do with Joe Biden. You know, it's a lot bigger than Joe Biden. Um, that song is written about the people on the on that stage and a lot more too. Not just them, but but definitely them. It's cool seeing some of my other music come out because people are, I guess, starting to appreciate and understand what it is I'm really trying to say. It's hard to get a message out about about your political ideology or your belief about the world in three minutes and some change. Um, but I hate, I do hate to see that song being weaponized. Big fan. Yes, I know you are. He is so, making an estimated forty thousand a day from chart topping music. That's insane. It is. It's a historic song. That song, I almost know it by heart, and I've only heard it probably 10 times. It's just a great song. It's a song that'll be around forever. Good for him at $40,000 a day. If that's the Republican anthem, then what is the Democrat anthem? Okay, fine. You don't like country music? Okay, fine. You don't like folk music? You don't uh, You don't like you, people speaking their truth and but, what they see? But if you listen to what the guy's saying, how, how could you not identify with that? How could you not like that? How could you be against that? How could you say that's like hate speech or something? You know what I mean? I don't fucking know. Okay, to the people saying that's the Republican anthem, because I don't even think that most of the people I, who identify with that song would even consider themselves Republicans, although they may choose to vote that way, depending on who the candidates are. Yeah, right? I mean, a lot of times. And depending on what the values are of the the candidates and what's happening in the world. My question to them would be, okay, fine. If you're going to draw the line like that, then tell us more about what is the Democrat anthem and the values that it represents. Because as far as I can tell, it has a lot to do with things that are pretty fucking sick, dude. Trump, is he in Georgia today? Trump's in Georgia today. He's going to turn himself in and be arrested 
at the Fulton County Jail for the charges placed against him by the DA of Fulton County. And so, but he's been indicted multiple times and has had to show up to federal courts. This so, is his fourth indictment. But is this, this is different. Is this going to be any different? This is different because it's a state indictment. See, federal and state, obviously, as you know, are two different things. Uh, yeah, right. So, but like, other okay, it's a state indictment. So, were they treating him different? Well, it's just a different process. You know, you don't show up necessarily at the courthouse. I mean, he's he's going to be processed into the jail. Like and he's going to like have mug shots. Probably. I'm not sure. I mean, he's a president, so he has to have Secret Service with him at all time. I mean, it's different. He's a president of the United States, so I- I'm not sure they're going to process him into the jail. And he's got to post bond. And he's going to post bond and get out. So he's being arrested, processed, and he's posting bond. He won't sit there. On right. RICO charges. And they've done the same thing. They've arrested 18 people along with him. And most of them came in Fulton, from Fulton County. Fulton County. This is this is an indictment of RICO, which includes 18 people, including President Donald Trump, trying to change the results of the election in Georgia, because he made a phone call and he said, "Hey, I need you to find me 11,000 votes." Okay, so just to be clear, Joe Biden won the state of Georgia by about 10,000 votes. If you live in Georgia. Do you think Trump wins or Biden wins in Georgia? Razor sharp margin, okay? So a lot of people said there was fraud going on. Personally, one of my family members went to vote. They asked him as he was walking into the parking lot who he was voting for. He said Trump. They said, sorry, we don't take Trump ballots at this location. You have to go to the one across town. Really? That happened to a family member of mine. So why wouldn't they take Trump? Like you're not like you're supposed to vote for either candidate. At so he level. took the bait and he left, which I said to him, you should have just gone in there and voted. But what they did is they caught him in the parking lot and deflected him. Now he drove to the other side of town and got his vote in. and got his vote in. But imagine how many people would not have. They would have been like, they just took off for their lunch break. They don't have time now to drive to the other side. So of they town. didn't vote. The Maybe. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm just saying this is something that happened to my brother. So there were a lot of things and there always are in every election. And there's a lot of times when people challenge elections. Right. Right. Now, look, I'm no attorney. I'm not the prosecutor. I'm not the defendant. I'm not any of those things. So we'll just see what happens. Right. That's what's going on. I mean, I haven't had my finger on the pulse very much, but most people think he's going to get out of these charges like That in and of itself, I think, is true also. And therefore, it points to the very thing that they are accusing him of, because there's really no other reason to do it. They're accusing him of election interference. These trials in and of themselves are exactly that. He's the leading candidate of all, actually. He's ahead of Biden. He's ahead of every Republican. It's pretty close with Biden. Some polls he's ahead, some polls Biden's ahead in the well, nation. It's just because they hate Trump. That's why. Compared to all the other Republicans, I mean, he's like 60 points and everybody else is like two. If Biden goes again and Trump goes again, it's going to be tight because the amount of people that hate Trump just for hating Trump, because he's a very polarizing character, he just doesn't care. They've got Vegas odds on how much he's going to weigh in at. People are betting on his weight, what you think his weight is going to be. He's going to get weighed. All right. I wonder if they're going to measure his hands. He hates his little hands. That's a sore <laughs> subject know. for Donald Trump. Hey. But still, I mean, it's still a major deal. I oh, mean, yeah. No, it's, no. A, it's, a ser- it's a very serious thing. We spoke last week about this book called The Daily Stoic. And Ben, I'm going to respond to your question, what the fuck is going on with the world? And today's message, start where the world is. And once again, we will quote Marcus Aurelius. Do now what nature demands of you. Get right to it if that's in your power. Don't look around to see if people will know about it. Don't await the perfection of Plato's Republic. But be satisfied with even the smallest step forward and regard the outcome as a small thing. Have you ever heard the expression, don't let perfect be the enemy of good enough? 
This idea is not to settle or compromise your standards, but rather not to become trapped by idealism. I start from where the world is, as it is, not as I would like it to be. That we accept the world as it is does not in any sense weaken our desire to change it into what we believe it should be. It is necessary to begin where the world is if we are going to change it to what we think it should be. Hmm. There is plenty that you could do right now, today, that would make the world a better place. When he says the world a better place, your world. I mean, you might be out to change the world of many, but I take it as, too, there's stuff you could do today to change your world. That's right. What is in your life. There are plenty of small steps that, if you were to take, would help move things forward. Don't excuse yourself from doing them because the conditions aren't right mm. or because a better opportunity might come along soon. Right. Do what you can now. And when you've done it, keep it in perspective. Don't overblow the results. Shun both ego and excuse before and after. Mm. I like that last That's part beautiful. a lot. I really do. Because, yeah. yeah, I mean, do what you can do right now. Last week you referred to, you know, some health things you were going through. You had said you'd started 75 hard. It would have been so easy after being at the doctor's all fucking day for you not to go do the workout. Yeah. So you didn't have to start completely over. Yeah. And you did it. You did it, and you didn't start over, and you continued yeah. the course, and you felt fucking good afterwards because you didn't just succumb to the circumstances of that day. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, man. And, you know, that's a very profound statement right there um, that you just read. And to me, it reminds me of how we started this thing with the 2,000 contacts. I've got a friend that owns a, a pest control company, and I'm always saying, if you just would hit 2,000 doors, and he, it's a very successful pest control company, by the way. does very well. Why doesn't he have a fucking podcast? If you would hit 2,000 doors, well, he's probably listening. We should tell him. Why don't you have a fucking podcast? Yeah. How many other, hold on, shut up, Ben. Yeah. How many other pest control companies yeah. have established themselves as leaders in the pest control world? by using a podcast as a medium that's a, that's to a educate question. not only your clients, but also other pest control companies. Yeah, because think about it. What if there was a pest control podcast and you could use it like as a homeowner for like like you did an episode on ants, like kitchen ants. You did an episode on rats and mice. You did an episode on, or like, just, what do you do? Or what the season is. What yeah, but, seasons, seasons, seasonal like, things. You could have a hundred podcasts. What separates your business? Yeah. For instance, and I'm, I know we're going off on a tangent here. This is exactly what I'm fucking talking about because it's like, okay, the other day somebody knocked on my door Yeah. and my kids go, there's somebody outside. I looked out the window and I was like, it's a stranger. I'll talk to him. Yeah. But I had seen this guy in my neighborhood really hustling. When I say hustling, dude, it's like 100 fucking degrees right. where we live in Georgia right, right. now. It is a sauna. Yeah, it is hot. cook your nuts hot. All of Jack's football practices have been and canceled. games canceled for the whole week. Right. Because it's like 100 degrees. There's a heat advisory. This guy, when I was pulling in from work, I saw tall, good looking young kid. Yep. Saw him going door to door. Yep. He hadn't made it to my house yet. But hours later, talk to him? he rang my doorbell. What was he selling? Pest control. We need to get his card. Did you get it? I don't know. I've got a pest control company. He was good. I wasn't going to buy from him. I just had my shit serviced. But he was good. Yeah. I had objections. Yeah. He had answers he had and answers. responses. Yeah. And for a second there, I almost wanted to. Yeah. I almost wanted to just say, fucking give it to him. And I even told him afterwards, I said, after he tried to overcome my objection again yeah. and tried to sweeten the deal again, yeah. I said, I'm not going to buy from you today. But I do appreciate your sales pitch because yeah. it was damn good. You almost got me. That's funny. You know what my dad always said? What? My dad always said, if they tell you how good of a salesperson you are, do you know what that means? You didn't get the sale. That's fine. No, I know, but as a salesperson, yeah. if that's what's happening, just know. 
You no, probably didn't get it. No, you're not getting it. And I told right. him that. He did take up 15 minutes of my damn time standing yeah. at the front door. Yeah. With my daughter, we were about to go kick the soccer ball. And I right. said, I got to go kick the soccer ball with my daughter. He had a great sales pitch. Yeah, he did. And it seemed like the company he was working for was like Moxie or something like that. There might even have been a couple of things they did that my current wasn't even doing. No, they are actually a good company. I recently had somebody that had a termite bond for them. Okay. And, you know, we fill out disclosure forms in the real estate world about those types of things. Well, oh, yeah, you're in real estate. You deal with these most, assholes all the time. Most often, people don't have like all their information together. And so we'll offer to gather that information if they just give us the company name. Trying to track these people down for the information that we need on the termite bond, which is all the terms of it, by the way, is tough. Okay, this company, Moxie, I call them, somebody answered, they're polite, they're ready for my call. They give you the shit, right? I told them the address of the property, she pulls it up, she's like, you're probably looking for the following information, is there anything else you need? Bang, 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 gave me everything, it was over in five minutes. Wonderful experience. So you endorse them? I do endorse Moxie. And I'm not surprised now to hear they've got the front lines covered, because they got the back covered too, I'm telling telling you. you He's smart because he's like, so-and-so over here and -and so-and-so over there have already signed up. And so we're going to be out here tomorrow anyway. anyway. So we would love to give you a deal and show you our services. That's one avenue, though. Who has a podcast? Who has established themselves I think Moxie should. I think 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 we should use this information to get in touch with them and say, listen, you guys came up as we were talking on a podcast, and we think you need to have a podcast because you guys... We both had stories about how great your company is. You should pay us for this endorsement right now. Yeah. But your buddy who owns this company. Yeah. If it's done right, there are many reasons. Like, how do you prepare your home for summer, winter, fall, spring? All those things. All those things. What our company does that these other companies don't do. Right. Nightmare stories. I mean, I wonder how many crazy ass stories your buddy has from being in the pest control business. Oh, dude. He's got stories. I've been trying to get him to come on. You know who it is, Gary. I've been trying to get him to come on. Tell him to quit eating mushrooms and get the fuck up. <laughs> is he if Mike shy? He ought not to be. He's Gary. Oh, well, apparently you know? <laughs> Gary's scared. He's not anything else shy. <laughs> but it could be applied to any company. And I think you talk about 75 hard and what I've been doing there and, and just everything else going on. And what I'm gravitating toward, and that's what this is talking about, is at the day one mentality day one it's either one day or is it day one there's a big difference you're either going to do it one day or it's day one of you doing it and the truth is if you really think about it every day is day one for everything you do you're never going to do it the same exact way you did it it's always a little bit different. You wake up every day is a little bit different. Different variables are thrown in your face, different situations. Right. So the day one mentality requires that you are of peak mental and physical condition. Why? Because there's no excuses of not doing what you're going to get ready to do today because today's day one. There's no stacking effect. You didn't earn a day off. You didn't earn. And then I'm not saying you can't take a day off. I'm just saying we as a people, and certainly I'm talking about myself in a lot of ways, you know, you get comfortable, you get into a groove, you get into frustrations with people, you get into good feelings about people, bad feelings about people. These things build over time, right? But the day one mentality requires that you attack every day to the max, every day to the maximum. I do find that mentality in 75 hard because what 75 hard really is, is 75 consecutive day ones. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Like yesterday doesn't matter. You still have to execute your tasks today. You got it. So we have a listener that has reached out Mm. who has a problem. Kaylee and Ben, thank you for all you do. You inspire me on a daily, and I love you. That's nice. We love you, too. He's got a situation, and he needs our advice. Um, 
and especially if there's anybody in our audience that wants to chime in on this advice who might work as a CPA or if you work for the Internal Revenue Service. Fundamentally, the problem is, is that my daughter, who is now 23 years old, she's a student, filed her tax return for the year of 2020 back on March 6th of 2021. To date, she has not received her $300 federal tax refund. We have made numerous calls through the years asking what the holdup was. And of course, we asked for letters to explain the situation, but never got the same answer twice, except for COVID. In addition, we never received any letters from any of our requests. We started calling the IRS back in May of 2021, and the first IRS rep looked up my daughter's account and admitted that they had received the return, but the rep used the word pilfering. I asked her what she meant by that, and she was vague in her explanation. I do our taxes using TurboTax, and I always attach the original W-2s with the federal and the state returns. They can clearly see the amount that was withheld, and they can clearly see the total income. The IRS rep ultimately told us to wait a couple weeks or months. I fucking hate when they do that. And then, should the return not come, have my daughter call back and would get her refund by summer. We waited until August of 2021 to call in again, just before my daughter was heading back to school. And the IRS said that they were still working on it. They're still working on a $300 refund. And I get it. I'm thinking to myself, it's 300 bucks. To someone in school, 300 bucks is 300 bucks. And it's your 300 bucks. Mm -hmm. See, think about it. The IRS has been making interest off of your 300 bucks. If you owe them 300 bucks, you would have been fucking fined with interest and interest and interest. So now they're fucking with your money. You're not getting, anyway. So, and I'm just going off on a rant. Naturally, we accepted the answer because what the fuck can we do about it? It was a COVID delay, but we asked for a letter again, which was never received. We continued calling the IRS once in the fall of 2021. And then finally, we called in the last summer in July and August of 2023. The last two conversations with the IRS with two separate people were the most alarming. My daughter was told that she was not qualified for a refund and it was a dead completed tax return. They had not done anything with her return since fall of 2021, six months after receiving it, even though we had been told for years that they were working on it and to follow up. One other alarming answer was we were told in August, after six months, the IRS simply stops working on a tax return and it goes stale and into an inactive file, which never gets reopened. They do this without even as much as sending a letter. Can you imagine out of 170 million tax returns that are filed every year, that there are somewhere between two and four million returns a year that do not get processed? Do the math. If they start processing return but get stuck, they may place a check mark in box 39 like my daughter, which indicates does not qualify. That ends the process of it and the money never gets refunded. Now I understand what the first rep from IRS meant by pilfering. Could this literally be going on at the IRS? Are they pilfering tax refunds in the tune of $500 million a year? I was told by a tax preparer that this most often involves younger people and older people who simply won't follow up. Have you ever heard of anything like this? Has any of your listeners ever heard of anything like this? And from a tax person's perspective, how do you fix it? That's crazy, because if you think about it, it's a way that they are almost padding the numbers. Right. Like, okay, this is 300 bucks. You drag it along long enough. I mean, how much work is someone going to do for $300? Right. Right? Absolutely. They're not going to take it from the big boys. That's right. Because, you know, because it's a much more significant amount of money. 
300 bucks done two million times i would say to our listener although you know he'd probably pay more than 300 bucks Fuck yeah, to would. have someone do the return i don't know if it's actually necessarily a money maker you'd have to pay someone more than that and that that's probably a part of the situation is that they are dealing with people who don't have representation and it would cost more than that to get representation. So then what would be even the point of getting representation? My thought on it is have someone do your taxes for you. Would that make a difference? Though? Yes, absolutely. It would. Because now there's another legal party involved, a, it, a, a yeah. certified accountant. Well, they know what to do. They know a form to send in. You know what I'm saying? Well, and you would think that if it's coming from a certified public account, that's right. Yeah, it's official. If there are, is a department that handles this stuff, they don't do it with CPAs and tax attorneys. Well, you're just doing it on your shitty TurboTax software, and they're like, "Oh, what the fuck?" <laughs> Which a lot of people, people do, and I'm not saying there's no, anything I, wrong with it. There isn't, and it's I'm probably not, not. very efficient. And if you look at year over year over year of paying someone to file your taxes saves a lot you probably of save money. a lot of money you probably saved a lot more than 300 bucks just doing it yourself you, you know? get a lot more back you get more advice yeah i mean i i just like to have someone who's an expert past a certain point depending on how you file and how you pay you don't get refunds i actually had a situation where one of my clients paid in he was meaning to send two hundred thousand dollars and accidentally hit an additional zero. Mm. And this is a guy with big bank accounts, and it withdrew. He sent in $2 million to the cage. They took it as credit for future filings. They wouldn't give it back? I don't want to get into it. I mean, I'm just telling you the result of what happened. They took it as credit for future filings. I don't know what the legality. I don't know anything about this person's tax. I don't. I don't know anything about it. I'm just telling you. You meant to sit 200. He, he accidentally hit an additional zero. So an incredibly wealthy person, where the bank just went, boom, no problem, and he sent in two mil. And this is not for him. This is not a. But still, the interest on two million, even uh, at the smallest amount, equates to a yeah. good chunk of money. Yeah. Now they're making interest yeah. on your two million. Yeah. How bad of a day would you be? He had to have been losing. He his was fight. laughing about. It. He told me about oh. it the day he did it. No, oh, well, I guess. I mean, he was much. pissed. He was like, "I can't believe I did that." You know, it would have been like, you know, I, I guess for me, probably two hundred bucks versus two thousand bucks or something. Yeah. I sent him two grand, and I was supposed to send him two hundred. I'd be upset about that, but it's probably something that we would laugh about how stupid that was. Oh yeah, you know we saying? definitely would. Yeah, I mean, we'd be like, "Damn, that's stupid." If I was supposed to send him two grand and I sent twenty, that'd be a problem. Or if I was supposed to send twenty and I sent two hundred, that would be a problem. If I was supposed to send two hundred and I sent two, it'd be the end of my life. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's gonna bounce. <laughs> yeah, well, two mil wouldn't have cleared, bro. Yeah. <laughs> two hundred wouldn't have cleared. I wouldn't have cleared two hundred. Oh my god! If I was supposed to send twenty and I sent two hundred, that should be bounced. You would have sent nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, it would have been negative out of my yeah, account, would zero. which would have been a good thing because yeah. I would rather pay that um, that uh, overdraft, overdraft fee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> would it be more than thirty five dollars? <laughs> hey, because of the this amount is per occurrence, yeah. right? We've sent the police to your house for writing a bad check. There's all kinds of wacky stories like that, man. But the best thing you can do is just have somebody good on your side that helps you with this stuff. Maybe you get more money back. Maybe you don't have to do these battles where you're calling in over a couple hundred bucks to set and the other thing, you know. So I have a um, a situation, Ben, and I want to know how you would have handled it. Okay. Actually, I probably know how you would have handled it because okay. you would have been partaking in it. I was invited out mm. um, to a dinner. Yes. I think recently you might have had a similar experience. Yeah. Um, I was invited out with a, a group of people, one of them, more on the flashy side, mm -hmm. got a bunch of money, yep. attended this very nice, poshy restaurant. Yeah. It was about mm, four couples, right? Yeah. Sit down, have dinner. Uh, you know, I'm not a big drinker. Yeah. You know, I, even at this place, a fucking mule is $22. Wow. It was yeah. Fucking nice ridiculous. restaurant. Yeah. Ridiculous. And it's, you know, it's got a, a very you know, who's who profile, right. whatnot. They have multiple locations across the world. And, um, you know, 
normally when I go out with this group of people, it's unsaid, but normally one of them picks up the tab. Right. It's almost a guarantee. And But not this time. Well, I don't know that yet. But I order my food as if it's going to happen. Right. Wagyu beef, please. No, you, you, oh, know you went I'm... to Nobu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I already know what happened there. So I order. My wife orders. We're having some drinks. You know, we're wrapping up. In my mind, I'm calculating. Okay, well, if I have to reach for my wallet, it's my bill's going to be 300 bucks probably. You know, because no Double boo- that. Wagyu beef was 100 bucks. Was it? Okay. Yeah. I yeah. mean, but I'm not going to drink right. 100 bucks worth of drinks. I see, yeah. Because yeah. I'm going to drive. I didn't Uber there. Yeah. My wife, who is drinking some wine, you know, glasses, yeah. maybe there was a small b- a bottle at the table that was split, but she right. had a mixed drink too. So I'm thinking 300 bucks, maybe right. with tip. Dessert comes, having a great time. My buddy, the flashy, more extravagant one with yeah. the Amex black card or whatever, right. he's getting more and more fucked up. Right. And so where I think after dessert, we're going to wrap shit up. He then decides to ask the waiter that he wants to do a wine tasting. And at that time, I'm thinking, well, fuck, I don't care. I'm not drinking wine. My wife's like, I'll have us some wine. So the first bottle comes. Chances are I ain't paying for this shit anyway. Right. First bottle comes. It's a bin number, this, that, and the other. Cool. Hanging out. Order another mule. He's like, let's do another one. So he orders another bottle of wine. Oh, this is bin number 740. Right. This is a, a France bar. Right. I don't even fucking know. I don't, This dude, sommelier or whatever the fuck right. it is. I don't fuck. I hate the taste of wine. I know you like it. This guy tastes grapes and fucking years. Like just from the third bottle comes. I'm like, okay, guys, I'm ready to go. Because my ass hurts from sitting there. So the bill comes. He doesn't bring it to me. Right. How would you like this tab? Oh, you could split it four ways. And I'm like, oh, okay. Thinking to myself, okay, well, maybe the wine's, you know, 50 bucks a bottle. Yeah. The first bottle was $380. Oh, my God. The second bottle was 285 Yeah. And the third bottle was like 195 So now my bill roughly goes from what I think is 300 Yeah. to like over six. Yeah, I was going to say 600 easy. Plus tip. Yeah. And I'm looking at my wife and I'm looking at him and I'm like, I didn't fucking have a sip of this goddamn wine. Yeah. Do did I? your wife though? She did. Oh, of course she did. Yeah, she did. And I'm like, you see what the fuck you just did? <laughs> oh. You see what you just did? And now I'm reaching for my wallet. And you're like shaking. I'm shaking. <laughs> and I'm slow. <laughs> Uh, and the look on my face so is, heavy. is that of disgust. Yeah. I hate everybody at the right. fucking table. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> did they oh, purposely fuck with me? Yeah. Right? Hey, I have a great idea. We'll do it on Kay Lee. Because I normally pick up the tab. Yeah. This time, I'm going to order the most expensive shit they got. Right. And then I'm going to split it with everybody. Right. Because I know his wife will drink some. But okay, even if my wife didn't drink some, would you make a stink and go, hey, I didn't drink any of this wine? If my wife didn't drink any wine, I would I would just kindly say, you know, excuse me, um, could you please put the wine on the tab of everyone who drank the wine? We didn't have any wine. so What if my wife only had a glass? Would you go, hey, can you divide up that point? <laughs> At that as point, soon as she took a sip, even she a sip, is in. Even a sip, you're in. I think that when ordering wine, okay, so so the way I would have handled it, and again, I don't know this person, and obviously it's easier to say what you would have done in a situation you weren't even in, you know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously you had no idea that this was even coming down the pipe anyways. Well, right? I'm kind of guilty because I did go into it thinking and ordering as if he was going to pay. Right. So I kind of feel like... Uh, that's my fault. And then, but on the wine thing, you know, I would have, I totally have a conversation and be like, hey, um, are you going to drink wine or you want to order another drink? You know what I'm saying? And if, you know, I don't know, but that's, I can't even say I was, I would do that because obviously you're sitting there having a great time. 
goers a bottle of wine, they pour wine for everybody. You know, I probably would have been in the same shoes. What'd you do? You paid the tab. I fucking paid my tab. And I I had the look of shit on my face the whole, and then I had to come home and pay the babysitter. So I was like, thousand, seven hundred fifty bucks. I don't even, I'm, I'm still mad about it. I don't think I'm ever going out with those people again. Wine is so expensive at restaurants. You know, it's it's times like three or four, the actual cost of the bottle. So the worst of it is, those are only like 60 or $70 bottles. For a $385 bottle? Yeah. Yeah, that might have been like a $120 bottle. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, something like that. It's all fun and stuff. You know, Nobu is cool. It's pretty good. It's very commercial. It's not very- great to me. I mean, it's good, but it's not great. The atmosphere, it's the vibe, it's the... I love it, it's fine. You know, I, I think I think for what it is, it's it's wonderful. But, I mean, there's a couple places that I would go that I feel have better food than them. Umi and Tomo are both better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love sushi. Tomo's right next to it. All right, well, thanks, Ben, for that, uh, for that advice. And, uh, yeah, I'm still angry about it. I don't know what advice I gave. I just... You uh, didn't give any, Ben, yeah, actually. I didn't give any advice. <laughs> Nothing you said helped. The situation, but I was wondering Actually, what you were upset about. I didn't hear one word that came out of your <laughs> mouth. I'll have to listen to this back. I can tell there's. A, I've, I've been able to tell since since I got here today that there's an air of frustration. Yeah, in yeah. your tone. Yeah, there is. And now I think I know why. Well, that's that's one part. That's one aspect. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Man Fuse podcast. You got something to say? Join the show. Hit us up manfuse.com or seven seven zero seven four four. 5227. We'll be back later. Peace out. Foo Media.